and hello and welcome to the Pro Series. It is the 2 p.m. shift right here. I'm Greg Guyard alongside Kevin Burns on Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. If I could type this properly. Scott Douglas and Kim Baker on lane five. Cody 50 and Chris McDonough. On lane six. That's no, you right there. Just waiting for the lanes to warm up and we will be underway. We just had the 12 p.m. shift of the Pro Series a moment ago. And now we are underway with Scott Douglas and the 7-10 split to get started. 50's done pretty well for himself. He's got the four and 10. Scott Douglas also, of course. He and Tim Douglas out of here. Alley Cat Lanes in Kingston, Massachusetts. Nine box for 50 and a 10 for Scott Douglas. Kevin Burns alongside me. Kevin, how was the 12 p.m. shift uh, looking from your point of view? Tough. Very, very, very tough. Yeah. So you were mentioning, so it's the, I mean, I was theorizing it was the pins, and you were saying it was the angles, basically, that were difficult? I think it was more the angles because nothing will carry as Scott Douglas just throws a bomb. Um, Dave Barber on lane four falls suit. It's more the angles. Um, if you, Tim Douglas said that they, they just redid the side walls. I don't think they did because nothing was carrying. I was born with Nick Leach and he even struggled. So. Well, I certainly believe them, but on the other hand, you know, with the pin action, it can be difficult. Uh, especially with perhaps newer pins. I mean, these pins are beautiful, pearly white pins, but as I mentioned on the previous broadcast, well, many other things, of course, uh, that can be difficult because it's tougher to budge off the spot. 50s try just off target. Douglas still filling the strike, and he gets a spare on strike. Good to have you all here. Candlepin Bowling Network live on Facebook and YouTube. Paul Karen's going to be with us during the uh, finals. That's right. Where the real excitement will begin. Top 24 of this five-string qualifier for the men will advance, and the top eight will get a first-round bye. Douglas' Phil gets away, and unfortunately no pins come back. That's the angle I'm talking about. Sidewall. Yeah. After back-to-back -back nines for 50, his second ball. His try on the wood. Ooh, it just split apart on him. Douglas, and the wood stops short of the seven pin and does not make. Well, Greg, you got a busy day coming up pretty soon on the uh, 31st. Oh, would that be Easter Sunday by any chance? Yes, it would be. Uh, Lee Delane's Nashua, New Hampshire. So we that basically makes two events, but one thing at a time. Yeah. Lee Delane's Easter Classic coming up, the 20-string marathon of bowling on Easter Sunday, of course. A very historic story Tony Ehrman will be telling you more about uh, during that. Of course, Kevin, I, Kevin, you'll be bowling in this, or? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Myself and Bob Lee. Lee Delane's house bowler you are, of course. Myself and Bob Lee will be bowling together like usual. Bob Lee, our executive producer here at Candlepin Bowling Network. Get over five, thank you. 50 threw a pretty good ball. I thought that should have gone. It did. Scott Douglas. Four, six, seven, ten for the third ball. And he's got a nine, no, a 10 out of that. He made the four, six, seven, 10. How about that? What a shot, Pity what we, a shot. Pity we can only award a 10 for that. That's down for uh, 50. Sorry, I'm used to the maroon shirt. I nearly said Southall. Cody 50, 44 through four with that great count. Three, six, his chance to sit down on a dandy. Oh, he cherried the three pin. And he knew it too from the second he threw the ball. Here's Ken Baker. A little off target. Four pin. Oh, 
Well, just miss it with the nine. And 50. 53 half, not bad. Indeed, indeed. Let's see, it'll be tough to follow along with both. Well, let me see if I can pull this up here. So top, top five men in the last event was Scott LaPierre, Dan Danny Harris, John Winchell, JJ Turney, and Jimbo Ayotte. They had the five high series of the Lakeside Lanes random draw three man teams. Tim with a four. Four to begin. Tim got a four. This is Chris McDonough. We saw him. We last, saw action, him. last action I recall him in uh, was Friday Night Pro League substitution action as well. He got the one three six pin tipped, but didn't go. Tim Baker in the pocket. Drop seven. The four, the four five seven. Chris McDonough with a ten. A very pro 10. Baker's gonna need a pro 10 out of this. As well get the four seven out. The one thing I noticed here, Craig, you don't wanna throw the ball hard here. You really don't. Isn't that interesting? Greg, you're killing my view here. I'm trying to watch the pins and Oh, sorry. I'm just throwing dialogue boxes in front of your face. McDonough still can't pin out that half Worcester somehow. Tim with a 9, 13 after 2. Oh, what an out. What an out. I'll say. Chiseled out the 2, 4, 7, 10 to get that. It's 18 through 2. Baker 3 out of the first ball. See Rock and Bowl advertised on that pin sweep there. Cosmic lights here at Alley Cat Lanes in Kingston, Massachusetts. Oh, Chris McDonough punches up the six pin. The old lemon drop. Don't tell Paul Grant. Paul knows everything. We've established this. Baker pins out 10. Do you think he might know that I punched a lemon drop during warm ups? Well, if he donated a dollar to Candle Pins for Cancer, he might. <laughs> Now that you've confessed to it on air. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> McDonough wiggled that 10 pin. That's a pity. He almost got that spare and almost came back nicely on it. I owe Paul Grant so many, so much money for lemon drops, it's not even funny. Well, if, well, if it's not funny, it's an optional donation after yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. But uh, of course, Candle Pins for Cancer, a 501c3 charity. Doing a lot of good work for a, a lot of families. Al Johnson puts it together and... Money goes directly to families when they're at their most vulnerable during that difficult time in their lives. Always well, in their families. Yeah, Fresh is checking out a piece of wood. Now notice, he knows the foul line laser his arm, so he's going to hop over it. Boing. <laughs> nice sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> We've all played Mario. We know how it goes. Oh, yeah. Third ball. We've done a, yep, that, that's. That was good. Yep. That was good. Ball's ball. calling that one. I've been noticing Tim Picker is... Favoring the right, the left triangle a little bit. Every ball she's thrown, that's all she has gotten, but she's come back. Girls right to left, only she changes the angle there, trying to get at that 6'10 and does so perfectly, 32 through 4. Separate men's and women's division in play today. McDonough has the 5'7. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, there's no playoff division for the ladies this year, am I right? That's right. Okay. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. 5-7. Who needs wood? Just play the five and have it go flying over. Yeah. Blanca Gacharna might do well. I mean, 5 2 she'll, she's a bit disappointed with it. But against these tough pins, I th think she's got a good chance and certainly to possibly hold on and become the bowler of the year. One bowler of the year out of each division. McDonough's fill is high, nine. Four pin stands. Baker's got a good count here, 6-10. Wood could stick its tongue out. McDonough drives through. Chris has a 57 and a half. I just saw Justin Scally. 57 and a ball. I just saw Justin Scally on the screen make a real nice shot. He's at a 47 and a half. Lane four. Yeah. Yeah, Scott Douglas. 
with the Monster 62 half. I wonder how his brother is doing. Do you see her? It's working on a strike from what I can see. Not bad. Cody 50, lane six. Oh, he had what a, a bear in the fourth. A big 22. And now this. Okay, that is a perfect ball in Lisa's Fred Eagle plus the nine. Okay, Steve Bronchuk. Well, I didn't say. I didn't go that far, okay? <laughs> no, we should all be honored. Three, five, and ten. Well, I do want to mention that we did cover a duck pin tournament not that long ago with uh, Steve Bronchuk against Drew Steele. Was, was Steve on the mic? I missed that bit. Yeah, it was. Um, it was actually up the street from where I lived, too, believe it or not. And I was going to try and go and see it, but I was just so busy. I mean, you don't know how busy I am. 50 spare on strike, 83 and a ball through seven. But we all know how busy I am. I mean, I can't go to everything. Yeah, good. Douglas with this bomb. Good way to catch up on boxes for what it's worth. There's a strike. First of five strings here at Alley Cat Lanes in Kingston, Massachusetts in this 2 p.m. shift. Well, good ball by 50. That's going to be five. We are running a little bit late because we just got 12 o'clock literally just finished not that long ago. Get the warm-up. That's how it goes. Yep. Just as long as the bowlers are taking their turn when they're ready to go. Hey! Oh, double! Wow. That'll elevate the score in a hurry. Scott Douglas finds a way. If he's struggling with the split, he's still got the two, six, seven, ten. after chiseling out the four. The wrong pin to take out of that configuration. And a seven. Now Scott Douglas. Looks good, going for three. Oh, oh. oh Lisa, five. That got everyone's attention. It 19 did. on the first fill. Wow. 99 after seven. Cody gets the result he's after, 2-4. Now five pin, just gotta stay on the lane, don't get amped, that's a spare on strike for Scott Douglas. 119 after eight, 129 plus. Oh, baby. I mean, the Douglas brothers know their house. 50, excuse me, Tupin? Okay. That's what it's been like all day. That's what it's been like all yeah. day. Oh, Did look at this. Half was so standing. Oh, that's going to be a tricky one. An eight fill for 137 after nine. How dialed are you really, Scotty? Let's see. He, ooh. It just never goes when you want it to, huh, Kevin? I'm not going to, I, I want to say it, but I'm not going to say it because I have so much respect for Steve Brunchuk and what Darren Snuzzo and Dave Mellon, what did with that show. King of but, the Palace. Yeah, but how does that happen? I don't know. Don't ask. Scott Douglas with the monster is 146. <laughs> And then, of course, Travis Falk, the OEPD, of course, like showing up, Ron Chuck, on one episode where it was just like, uh, here, I'll literally animate on screen how a spread eagle happens. If you don't know after that, I can't help you, quote, unquote. <laughs> There's, 50's got a third ball coming up. I forget which episode that was on, but that was delightful. <laughs> it's Myself, Mala, and Nuzzle. Try to explain it to Steve Ron Chuck. I don't know how many times. I actually try to explain it to him at the Vinyl Square Lens where, when I met up with him one day. And I said to him, Steve, even I can't explain it to you. Yeah. You talk about candle pin bowling. It's a fun game, it's fun for all ages, but yeah, you can have a hard time to it. Let's see, Chris McDonough not gonna find that Phil fun, but he has a 60 half. Ken Baker. Oof. 
I mean, the ball really deflects away. We all know that old chestnut, the ball weighs less than the pins, but that comes really true here, where if you can't get it to drive through, it's just going to glance off it, and who knows from there. A 10 for McDonough. 70 after six. Pyramids at 47 after six. One question in the chat to the to some of the women bowl 10 pin as well. I don't know that for sure, but it is a notable that there is a 10 pin house just down the way in the it's actually connected to the building, believe it or not. And it is connected, yeah. You would not see me in a 10 pin alley, believe it or not. Well, I believe you. Okay. <laughs> Have I done it? Yes. My high single in 10 pin is at 157. Nice. Don't ask me what my high is in duck. I couldn't even tell you. It's been so long since I've thrown a duck pen. McDonough picks up another 10. Baker's third ball. Right in the face. There you go. Kemp's got a 10. Second 10 of the string. McDonough's oh. only had that one eight box other than that 10s and spares. McDonough with the with the uh, crazy split. Baker. Just can't find a hairpin. She can't find a hairpin. Couple, yeah, only a couple times, I'm afraid. Mm. Yeah, 410 was too difficult for Chris on that one. Kim's try, and his tail's away. The ball's just breaking too soon on her, unfortunately, as McDonough awards another 10. Well, up next, we're going to have Baker and Scott Douglas with uh, Justin Scally and Dave Bobber. All bowls do move from their, to their right. Chris McDonough was 11th in the three-man random draw teams. Currently on the wrong side of the playoff bubble, but we'll see. Everybody right now is trying for a playoff spot to bowl at the end of the month at Lita. And I'm pretty sure Kendall Pinball Network will be covering that. Mm-hmm. And, of course, as you know, I will be there because that's only 20 minutes away from my house. Single missed by McDonough. And hands to his head. I'll get over four. You were hit. Three, four, six, ten. That actually, goes. Actually, it's the... Uh, ten. It's the uh, three, the four, the six, and the ten. She so takes out the six, ten. Apologies if I got that wrong. Good to see you all here. 2 p.m. shift now and then the playoffs. As soon as this is done, string one of five. Right through the goalposts. So earlier, so off here, Craig, I was telling you about Keith, about the uh, tsunami. I was pulling next to him. He was shooting at a spread eagle, and he nearly converted it. Yeah. McDonough's in 10 box purgatory right now. He just chiseled through that two box. Yeah, we saw that shot earlier. You had, you had quite the reaction to it as well. You were on the lane adjoining. I was, and it was just missed. He didn't miss it by much. Just oh, there's a nine shot. Oh, a strike for Kim Baker. Six pin fell last. She needed that. She needed that. No time like the present. Chris McDonough with a 110 for his first string. Not to put any pressure on Kim, but she needs a double just to even think about 100 right now. Yeah. Do we? Is that Blanca barely average over 100 yet? I think that's going to hold. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chance here, oh, yes! What a call! Double what? strike! What a call! Well called, Kevin. I just said, I literally just said she needs at least a double to even think about a, um, about, about a, um, Triple digit. Well, we'll put the spare smudge on the board to indicate the second strike in the tenth. 92 in a ball. Now we're just waiting for the machine to reload. Yep, 
you, you bowl too quickly, that's sometimes what happens. I've been saying it for years. I've been saying it for years. You got all machines need at least two minutes for them to reload. <laughs> yeah, there's about uh, two dozen pins in any uh, pin setter, basically. 23 is the max you want. Yeah, two sets and an extra. Oh, it actually wasn't resetting. That's right, the X wasn't lit up. Hmm. I thought the Mendy system had that all covered. It's an older system. I actually used the Bayberry Bowl and Spencer and used to be by Acton Boldrum once upon a time. I love it. Such a nostalgia for it. Ken Baker. Those pin animations are my childhood. Oh, she childhood. hit the 100. She got 100. Bullseye. 100 under those. Wow. 28 in the 10th for that 100. So all the other uh, series finishing up right now. I can see Justin Scale through a 110, Dave Barber with a 114. Winchell has a 120, and Nick Norcross with a 124. Well, here's a treat for us. We're going to see Craig Colbert and Bobby mm -hmm. Wicko. That's Randy right. Randall through a 131 from what I can see from here. They will cycle through, and that will be in strings four and five, so stay tuned, folks. And next will be, as we rotate through, Baker and Douglas again, of course, but then Dave Barber and Justin Scally. Justin Scally usually helps out with some announcing. He usually covers the um, money matches. Money matches with uh, Bob Lee. I got a bunch of these last chicken tenders here. They're so good here in Kingston. Thank you for telling me that because I'm getting hungry. About two boxes away until string two begins. Yeah, we'll we'll take an audio timeout on this, and we'll be right back. We, I won't plan to do that every single time. Just gotta take a break this time around. Apologies. All right. Going back. Okay for me to take your levels up? Uh, yep. Cool. 
because I just did. <laughs> Kevin Burr is alongside me. My name is Greg Guyar for Candlepin Bowling Network. We are back now. I'll take that away. Scott Douglas and Kim Baker back now on lane six while they promote the 50-50 raffle that'll help increase the prize fund and uh, one bowler's wallet. Dave Barber and Justin Scally now up on lane five. Dave Barber first. Lucky strike, of course, a perennial favorite every single ICC Worlds tournament in reference to the former lanes at Lucky Strike in Lynn, Massachusetts. Justin Kochi in the field is also advertising them. Scott starts with a 7-10. That seems familiar for him somehow. And Barber's got a split. 2-4, 6-7-10. And the most bemused grin on his face. Spin that wood somehow. A little flat on the left side of it, I think. Bobo goes right through the hoop. <laughs> and a nine for Douglas and a seven for Dave Barber. Now it's a six. Now, now it fell. It's a seven. It was. Yeah. Come on. Round up. Come on, pins. Let's go. This is the Candle Pin Pro Series, a roughly monthly series of events of different formats and different bowling centers across New England, including up in Maine this year, which has attracted a more diverse collection of bowlers, and we've been happy to see it all year long. Playoffs are coming on up on April Saturday, April 6th at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, the other Lita Lanes event we were alluding to earlier. Apart from the Easter Classic, this Easter Sunday, unrelated to the Pro Series. Spare. Scott Douglas, after his 140s string, gets off to a good start here. There it is, Barber gets a 10. You want to know something funny, Greg? I'm looking at my calendar. No thanks, I hate fun. Okay. But, but they would. The playoffs is seven days after the Easter Classic. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, we're going to be busy that week. <laughs> I can't wait, honestly. Scott Douglas could have waited until he saw this. That's a three fill, unfortunately. With the spread eagle plus, eight pin is there as well. He chips out. Barber. Oh, yes, he got that one. Three, four, seven. Beautiful. What a star on that one. Scott Douglas blew out the left side triangle, so he will get a seven out of this. Good third ball. And comes right back in with a nine drop. 36 at the two. Here we go. Douglas, there's the pin action he was looking for. He's four for four on the head pin. Barber gets a spare. Two miles in a row. 46 in the ball, that's correct as you see it now. Scott, spare. Not head to head, good bowling from the pair nonetheless. All individual, singles knockout, the lane partners are incidental. Top 24 men will advance, top eight will get a first round bye. Barber with a seven, he leaves uh, five, Six, ten. He has a favorable piece of wood to carry it. The setback, I presume. So the wood is more favorable this time, and Barber finds a way. Should I say it in honor of Al Johnson? $50 in bonus money for three marks in a row. There we go. Which we will sometimes have on our show as well in the Candle Pinsor Cancer uh, TV show. Ah. Scott Douglas just to the wide on the two pin. I did pick up some singles results, so I'll share those with you in just a moment. Scott Douglas gets a nine, and that brings up Kim Baker and Justin Scally right and left. Justin Scally is playing his usual Academy Lean shirt that he always wears here on the tour. Justin, of course, captain of Academy uh, One this year. Uh, Delightful shade of turquoise this time around. 
I'll share those results in just a moment. Actually, let's do it now. Dean Sullivan came in first for the men, 624. Steve Poulin, we saw him on a tear, 604, the other 600. And then Nick Zuffalato, 584. Luke Eterna, 584. Nick Leach, 580. Keith Beaupre, 578. Got Justin Kochi, 576. Mark Gallagher, 564. Uh, Nate Leafs, 560. Even Ryan Southall's 556. I think stands a chance, to be quite honest with you. Scotty, second ball. Got it, 47. And thank you for not messaging my scores. And you're welcome for not making a joke about that first. Okay. Kim Baker as a six. No, because I know how much you and Paul like making fun of me when we're on the air as it is. I mean, teasing is one thing for sure, yeah. but the reality is that, yeah. you know, anybody can join these events. You know, uh, it's a pro series, and there is a paid uh, subscription, so you one can join the tour, of course, and qualify for uh, playoffs with the Pro Series points that you get for your finishes in the events. But the events are also standalone events as well, and if you're willing to pay the admission and if you can bowl properly, you're welcome. Oh, yeah. I mean, I got on because of Dave Barber and Mike McIntosh, but I wouldn't trade it in. I mean, it's just, it does make, it does give you the endurance and it will make you a better bowler. All you have to do is go out and try all the time. That's all. I mean, one thing you have to remember is just imagine what it's like to be on the lane side by side you know, with, that, you know, the top tier talent. You know, I think that's my problem because every time I'm on the lane side by side with, <laughs> with some of them, it does get into my head and it's like I forget how to bowl because you have that, you feel like you're in awe. Right. But, but one of these days, I'm just going to shake it and say, you know what, I'm going to go out there, throw my game the way that I know how to play. That is the key to bowling. Just focus on the 10 pins in front of you. They're the only ones you can control. Well, Scully wanted some more control over that. He got the head pin, but a split. I mean, at one point, I was doing great. I had three tens in a row, and a lot of those tens could have been spares. Uh, it's, it's like I said, I mean, if you've never pulled in a house that you're not used to, you don't know the lanes. You don't know how the pins are going to react. You don't know the sidewalls. That's always been my problem. So, but it's like I said, I mean. You and you got five strings to figure it out. Kim Baker. Ooh, just off the head pin. Well, most of us would like to try and figure out within one string so that way we're not struggling going sure. into string two and so on. Though there are some houses like uh, 1710 in Augusta, which we went to for uh, the mixed doubles competition, had records by lane individually, we learned, which some of those lane records actually fell during the Pro Series, in fact. Nick Norcross, who we're going to see next, threw a 201. And I, wow, what a strike by Scout. And, right. And that was the doubles event where it was mixed. And that was by far a very, very successful. It was a two-day tournament. A ten stringer tournament, that's right. I mean, different shifts still, but we were there for both days. Sorry, my mic's a little up. You were there for both shifts. I was only there for the one. Scally maybe crossed over slightly. Because, like I said to you that morning, I don't know if I was going to be there for the second one because I wasn't going to play chicken with a snowstorm. Yeah. How soon we forget about the snow once the clocks change and the weather changes, and then boom, playoff season upon us as well. Yeah, got exactly. Got Pro Series playoffs. Uh, Friday night pr uh, Pro League playoffs won't be far behind, and then Mixed Worlds as well. That'll be at Academy Lanes Haverhill. We're looking forward to that. Central Park Lanes for the Friday night Pro League playoffs if you're for the sake of consistency. Ugh. Gee whiz. Kim Baker, 26 through 4. We saw Sean last night at the Friday night uh, Pro League. Seven fill, seven box. Now, who was playing that one? I didn't have a chance to watch it. I was working, and I couldn't get Central 3 and Academy 2. That was a rematch of a previous broadcast we did. And... Um, 
The results may surprise you, not to sound like one of those crappy internet pop-up ads. That's our, one of our more recent live broadcasts on Candlepin Bowling Network. Uh, watch it on YouTube for the best experience. Can make her on her fifth box. This is perfectly standard in the pacing. Nick Barber will wait his turn. Run it down, yes. And just like Baker did, resilient at the end of the half. We remember that double strike she had the string before this one. This time she's got to spare. And it brings back up Scott Douglas and Dave Barber. Take a look and see here. Dave Barber currently 20th. Currently is just on the right side of the playoff bubble at the moment. Scott threw the ball for a strike. Instead, he's got the 6 8. Yikes. Scott is 6 for 6 on the headpin, as is Justin Scally, for that matter. Flat on the wood. Barber will be on a spare when he takes his first ball. Douglas, 10. Dave lands on the three pin, so four horsemen, the eight and nine. You've got Mike Machici's stats in front of you, I see. A lot of 400s, I remember. Yeah, Chester threw a 454. Woo. Joey Lister, who's here, threw a 437. And last night. Aaron Fontaine went Spare. 409. Jimbo Aya went 407. And Peter Crawford went 401. Of course he did. Well, let's not forget, he threw... I think two the, two seven. Yeah, that's the league I believe. My birthday is February twenty seventh. That's how I know it offhand. Well, that's a good way to remember it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm partial to that score. Incredible six straight strikes by Pete Crawford Jr. at Ryan's Millis. That's ten. And let's not forget Nick Norcross had five hundred votes to throw a two or one. Oh, that's a good shot, and that's a spare. For Dave how, Barber. And look how far out that piece of wood came. He's, he's wishing he had better count on this, to be fair. But, oh no, seven fill on that one and another. That's tremendous. Five Nine. spears in a row. Good. Five. Do you, do you think we should have Al Johnson break up the checkbook and he can write up the check for the bonus money? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't paying. That's his excuse. <laughs> Scott Douglas still had pin perfect to this point, although he's got another split. Barber's going to mix out eight. A 102 after seven. He's at, he's at a 110 right now. He's good and he's lucky. Very, wow. Six. Another spear. Hang on, okay. I was more Steve Bronchuk. It was Turkey, Eagle, Badge. Then did he say Bronchuk? Ugh. I can't I remember my King of the Palace jargon. I can't repeat all of the King of the Palace jargon on the air, of course. No, you can't. <laughs> Though it made a public access TV. I don't know. I still have to clear that with Jonathan Rios independently if we're doing any of those shows. He recently partnered with uh, Skins, as in Candlepin Skins. Uh, titled Skins, of course. Also out of Lita Lanes. Yep. That's on Candlepin Corner on YouTube, but not Twitch. How about the cap of the wood? Oh. Uh, the miracle mojo is gone, I suppose. But you know what? He does set it up to actually have a legit shot of making the shot. Yeah. Douglas still can't get the time of day. He's 9 for 9 on the head pin, by the way. Oh, how's that, though? I wonder. He's I think he waved it. Off. Yeah, he's waving it off. That's a 7 box. That's a... 126. 126, yeah. Yep, he did wave it off. Yep. I mean, yes, there's a camera pointing at the lanes, but at the other uh, side, bowlers are very uh, good and sportsmanlike about this call the vast majority of the time. That's a strike right on schedule. Blink and you miss it, 136 and two. Scott Douglas has a chance here with a 1, 2, 7, 10. If he gets a triple, he'll end up with a 156. Yeah, wouldn't put it past him. It's high single. It's like Jim Baker showed us how to get that double on this lane. 
She might give him a couple pointers. Who knows? Yeah. Get get in on this lucky strike huddle. So for the first time, Scott Douglas didn't get the head pin. Barber threw the ball for it. Well, let's not forget uh, Dave Barber's father is Jim Barber, who is yeah. in the Hall of Fame. Nice guy. Yeah, no accident. And the fill is 10 on that one, 146. Solid start in the it's second shift. Scal's working on a strike. He's at 58 working on a mark. I was joking, but Allie didn't want me peeking at the scores. Maybe Dave will let me. Yeah, he's at two, Dave Barber is at 260 through two, 130 average. That should be pretty, pretty good. Shall we say also like? Maps. In the 130s, I think that's fair. Uh, his, uh, also, his name is synonymous with success. The greatest of all time. You know, a lot of people will put Gary Carrington in that character. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll make reference to a lot of those famous names when we come around to the Easter Classic, which also only won once, incidentally. With all the, with 100 TV appearances, he only won the Classic once. That's right. Jeff Surrett, of course, the most successful at that tournament. He went four, he won it four years in a row. Then I believe Chris Bovia won it. Then he won it the year after. And what was it? Bob Whitcomb ruined a Chris Sargent run of dominance as well, somewhere in there? I believe so. Um, I really don't know because... Got to consult the spreadsheet. Which, Dave Barber actually is an instrumental help in getting uh, Easter Classic stats. Between him, between John Zappi, between Dottie Lawrook, uh, I believe that's everyone, Bob Lee to an extent as well, uh, we have like a perfect archive, and I can't wait to share that on the air with you all. Maker's got the six, seven, ten. Ooh. I'm surprised the uh, ten didn't go. Scaly does bid on the uh, one eight nine on the one eight nine. After only his first head pin miss. Baker with the uh, ten. Ken pins out well. Scaly with the ten. Off the cap of the wood, no problem. Hey there, Casey, good to see you in chat. Good to see you all here, 2 p.m. shift here after the 12 p.m. we had earlier. Second qualifying shift of two, Alley Cat Lanes in Kingston, Massachusetts. That's Kevin Burns, I'm Greg Guyar, and this is Candlepin Bowling Network. Should we get the great Paul Grant uh, mention as well? He's, he's in the coming soon credits. Yeah. Just like you were last shift. Because <laughs> you had to go and bowl the thing. Well, you know, excuse, well, did I have to bowl? No. Yeah, no, no, no. That's always a good excuse. Yeah. That was Jordan Britton's excuse for not calling the ICC Worlds uh, a few years ago with Corey Alisi. He had to go and win it instead with Team Academy Lanes. Yeah. Well, I remember that. You and I were covering the... Uh, semifinals, that's the right. semifinals, yeah. Because... If I remember right, Scally Anthony Carey, myself, mm. you, Paul, and Bob were all covering that the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage, quite literally. I think we were at opposite walls, pretty much. You and I were on the left side. With Paul, Paul and uh, Anthony were on the right. Yeah. Makers found this head pin, but it's four, five, and seven. What behind? Yeah, he didn't curl it all the way over as he usually does. Unfortunately, this lands in the six pin. He's on 86 through eight. Sorry about that, I had to update scores. This is it. Baker on the seven pin. Scali just missed a head pin. Good run at it. Yeah. But the knockout strings I'm looking forward to, just one string Head-to-head -head competition, no elimination, as we're not considering the whole field this time, so less uh, scurrying about for you, Kevin, but uh, we will, although we still will be curious to see how all the other brackets are doing. 24 advance, top eight have a first round bye. A nine for each of the bowlers, as it happens, and their distinct competitions, men's and women's competition.
third, second to five, excuse me. Taking a look, see here, I think. Uh, she has a panda garden that she's going to clear up. That's it. Oh, now you got to hit command on the Mendes system. Mendes? Mendes? I, never, I, was saying, I was saying Cubica wrong for the longest time. Well, you know what's funny? This is the same system that Bayberry has. Bayberry has the same system. Acton used to. And uh, I forgot one thing. Sunnyside Bolodrome in Danvers also has a, it's a different version of Mendes. It doesn't look like this, but it's the same company that makes that score. And I can't remember which one Lanes and Games and Cambridge used. That was a quirky one in its own right. Well, Lanes and Games was quirky as it was. <laughs> Jane Penn Centers. Oh, my God. Every time. You explain. This is, I can't, it's so hard to explain it. The pen deck, where the tubes normally are, right. it was about maybe five feet higher than what it's supposed to be. And if you tried to hit anything, the pin would just jump up, come back down onto the plate, and you will get a quirky leap. I, I was watching... Uh, new Generation on YouTube, yeah. and I was watching the Pro Series and the kids' matches, and I was like, and I was there because I saw my handsome face in the background. Right, Justin Scali 104, Kim Baker 80. And it was a lot of weird shots. I remember seeing John Boudreau making a couple shots going up against his idol, which is Craig, Craig Holbrook. Holbrook. And yeah, that's right. And it was like, Quirky, quirky, quirky. Rob Taylor said the same thing. Even Shu said it. Yeah. The former name Candlepin for kids and then Candlepin New Generation. I think COVID-19 scuttled it, unfortunately, which is a shame because that's a great pipeline of talents. It is still available out there on YouTube. Uh, it's a PCOF Dirt, I think, was the Candlepin for kids channel, and Candlepin New Gen has its own channel. Now, I asked you on Messenger if there's any hope of that coming back. And from what you told me, there is rumors that it is going to yeah. come back, but it's kind of hard to do it on the internet without parental consent. It is tough. Yeah, I don't even know. If, I don't even think we would do a live stream, honestly, because you know, like, I mean, this would be a ton of fun for the kids. You know, oh, having yeah. them on air was awesome. Just, I just don't think it could be live. You know, just in case, you got to protect them a little bit. Not bubble wrap them, but you got to be careful. The internet's a crazy place. Right, you crazy people out there watching Candlepin Bowling Network? <laughs> Eric, what the heck are you doing all the way on the other coast? Good to see you in chat. Thank you very much for watching. It's not frozen, and he's just standing there. <laughs> Third string of gets started in just a moment. Uh, bowlers are pretty much on their 10th box all the way across the lane, so we're going to be rotating very soon. we got... This will be 14 lanes in use, I believe. Uh, no, th yep, they're 14. Using, they're 14 using lanes from lanes one to 14. 14 is moving on lane one. Yeah, but if you're in the Kingston, Massachusetts area, hey, they they got plenty of lanes. They got 32 of them, and there's 10 pin lanes down the way. You know, you want to come bowl? You still got you know, plenty of space for you. Good arcade as well. Alley Cat Lanes, uh, Cat with a K. Alley Cat Lanes in Kingston, Massachusetts. Do I even want to know how long it took you to get here? Uh, so you're coming from New Hampshire. No, uh, I'm coming from, like, well, yeah, the Madison New Hampshire border. Okay, so what? took me an hour from Central Mass. took me an hour and three minutes. Whew. Yeah, hour 15, I guess. You got me beat there. All, moved, all moving now for string three. We have Nick Norcross, Dave Barber, Justin Scally. No, do we have Scally? Yeah, we have Barber and Scally, John Winchell, and... Nick Norcross. Excellent. Let's, let's see if Nick Norcross can throw it to 100 on the air. Yeah. What was most extraordinary is that the C Pro Series season before, he had a 196, I think it was, at Woburn Bolodrome. I mentioned uh, 1710 Augusta has individual lane records. His 201 has the – it's the highest individual lane record, but that's only because Mark Ritchie's 207 high single in 1710 Augusta was across multiple lanes, which would be more customary in a – league format but it is still an interesting statistic 
I'm trying to remember. I th there were definitely a few others. That's Dave Barber on lane six. As before, he rotates over and he, he takes out the 4 8. Norcross and Winchell will get their names on the board, and here's Nick Norcross. We saw him last night bowling for Central 3 as ever. Outpost, four horsemen in the 7 pit. Barber spares. Norcross, tough for him throwing that left to right ball. Took out the wrong pin, 1 6 7 10. Did you notice the shirt that Nick is wearing? He's wearing one of those old Channel 5 Kendall Pin Bowling shirts. Is he now? Yeah. I know he'll sometimes wear the one which he wore on Candle Pin Challenge, of course, which was also a red shirt. How interesting. Well, here's a fun one for you. I was watching last night an old Candle Pin Challenge nice show. Nice shot. I was watching an old Candle Pin Challenge show last night. Just to, you know, get ready to announce for today. Yeah. It was John Zapp, Bobby Witt, and Jeff Surrett. Yeah. Bobby Witt beat Jeff Surrett in the Challengers match. And Bobby Witt beat Zappy to win. Ooh, 7-10 goes. To win the match. You can watch them all in the same Friday Night Pro League match. What? You can watch them in the same Friday Night Pro League match. Oh, yeah, you can. You can. In fact, one of our most highest rated shows was uh, the old Woburn versus Union Street uh, team. Uh, of course, now known as Exeter and Hingham. I got there. Is um, You don't have the standings for the uh, Friday Night Pro League, do you? Uh, it probably, you know, <laughs> I think I can put them on screen in theory, although I don't know the latest ones after, uh, after last night. After last night. Central three is leading, I can tell you that much. Nick Norcross's squad is doing very, very well. Didn't they just sweep Esther yeah. in the uh, standing yeah. match yeah. that we covered? By we, I mean the uh, Candle Pimple Network. Right, 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 right. I, got, I, I, I am planning on getting there for the playoffs. And it's been, it's tough. It's really tough to even get to half of the events that I, that I want to help out at. We appreciate every bit you can do, especially here for the Pro Series, where there's going to be a lot going on around the field in a moment. Knockout matches, one string competition starting, well, there is no set schedule time. It's just basically whenever this ends. Norcross head pin, 2-4. A lot of bowlers from the first shift are anxiously waiting to see if their scores will hold. He's here. Norcross had a bit of a downtime in the last Friday Night Pro League match, and luck like that is not going to help out. That time he got his optic pin, I guess, too full. And a 10. 41 through 4. Barber, oh, that wood just swept this way and that. It's like the windshield wiper that doesn't actually collect the debris you wanted to. Got that little hitch in the blade. Ooh, boy. I tell you what, a board to the left, and I think he has a chance at that, even though Barber throws left to right, and he's trying to cut it right to left. I don't know. Norcross, huge hit there. Almost looked like it crossed over a bit, but instead, he's got the eight pin after the four got swept late. Barber's half is 55. He'll be slightly disappointed, but it was solid bowling throughout. And there's the spare. Norcross will sit on one, 51 and a ball. That's actually a second mark. Not head to head, but Dave Barber had two of his own. To our left is John Winchell, and to the right, Justin Scally. I also see Tim Soucy, Craig Holbrook, Brendan O'Dowd. Uh, we already saw Nick Zuffalato. Who else is there? Bob Whitcomb, Pete Ricciatelli, and I think there's one I've overlooked. I believe that's Brian Allard over there, if I'm seeing correctly. Scally's got seven. Sorry. If I remember right, the last tournament at league side, it was a three-way tie. Yes. And remember how they had to do the one-three, one-screen roll-off. But and did they? 
and then it was all for not. <laughs> it was probably just some bowler's addition error, perhaps. Never really know. Scally spares the triangle. Well, from what Nate Lee said, it was like, oh, somebody had a mathematical error. Yeah. Well, the scoring sheets are still handwritten right here. I mean, the automated scoring system here helps, but all scoring is submitted manually and uh, very carefully entered into the computer there, which is probably the less likely source of the computer error, which is why I'm thinking it probably has to do with the handwritten scoring. Oh, oh no. Oh, people. Scally was on King of the Palace. I can do this. Oh, no. 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 Oh, people. You throw the ball 60 feet down the lane and you get penalized like that. How does that happen? Ah, uh, you want to do it for windshield too? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, I don't believe this. <laughs> Third, second ball coming up. Love you, Braun Chuck. <laughs> I was just going to say, Steve, we love you, but. <laughs> yeah. The great advocate of small ball. Nice out by Skell. Yeah, very good. It's so easy to keep punching through like that. Winchell wants to run down these three, of course. He'll take one. That is the premise of bowling, of course. Yep. <laughs> there it is. Uh, seven box for 17 through two. Clichés, they drive me nuts. They're old hat. Oh, well, Scally with a much better lead this time. He leads the 10th uh, pin. Ooh. Winchell's trying. Hmm. Oh, get over six. There we go. Two, four. Did you notice the bowling balls that uh, Hobook is using? We'll see him in just a moment. Pearl, oh, early white. They're like Chris Sargent white. They're actually Sargent's old bowling balls. Oh, they are? Yes. No kidding. And. You, you, you know that firsthand. I would know that firsthand. And here's the other thing. Terry Ann was going to buy me those balls at the fundraiser that we were covering. But we didn't have the money, and I was trying to get in touch with Chuck Sarge to get him. Alas. Because if I had those, I would not even throw them. They'd probably just be on a trophy case forever, sure. Well, there's a reason why. Those are the balls he threw his 245 with. There we go. At Metro Bowl in Peabody, 245, of course, tied for the highest uh, string with Ralph Zem. And Mark Ritchie has the highest three string at 519. Oh, oh come on, ball. ball. Do something. Aren't the just... ball went in front, the seven and the ten, twice, and did not touch one of them. Yeah, but there's your new sidewalls for you, Kevin. Spare for Winchell. We'll stick with eight there. Justice Galley with two marks and 47 through four. Third string of five in the second shift. And after this, the knockout rounds. One string, single elimination knockout. Top 24 advance, top eight, get a first round by. Scally, six, seven. He's five for five on the head pin, like he was last string. He's a golfer too, and we mentioned Justin Waters, a golf professional as well, golf teacher, instructor, we should say. Very mechanical delivery. That oh, goes. Oh, what a shot by, by Justin. The wood was there, but you have to get on the right side of that pin, and Scally did. 57 and a ball. He's going to feel good about that one. You saw it for yourself. Winchell's fill was eight on that uh, first ball, excuse me. He went four for five on the head pin. And he waves that off. That'll be an eight box because it hit the pin in the channel first. Let's take a look at the standings overall right here. So John Winchell is currently in seventh place right now. Top eight are currently Joey Lister, Tim Douglas, Scott LaPierre, Aaron St. Cyr, Danny Harris, Jimbo Ayotte, John Winchell, and Chris Merrill. That's Pro Series points, which are mathematically awarded for finishes in both qualifying and the playoff rounds 
of each competition. Dave Barber is on the right side of the playoff bubble, as is Nick Norcross. Nick Norcross in 13th place at the current moment. Scali likely out of the picture this year, but I'm not convinced we've seen the last of him. There's a spare for Barber. He's picking up another dandy there. That's three. Incredible just that stutter step, abbreviated delivery of Dave Barber's does so much damage at the other side of the lane, 60 feet away. Norcross. He gets a nine box out of that, 62 through six. You know, it's happy a professional bowler and commentating at the same time because you're talking to your friends. <laughs> of course, of course. Crossfire, I think they call that. Yeah. Um, Barber. You get a strike on spare, my goodness. You blink and you miss it. But um, er, no, Justin yeah. Scali was, was just talking to me about that heat bucket shot that, he, that you and I were making burn shot with. And uh, and he said, I never crossed over on the 1-3 pocket. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true, he never does. He always crosses over on the 1-2 po pocket. There it is, one, three, and seven. First head pin missing an eternity for Barber. Our near got it. Sorry to miss that hammer there. He's got eight. Get your head down for one second and you miss the moment. I'm very sorry about that. Norcross is six. Two, four, seven, and six. And a nine for Barber. That puts him at 102. Norcross is two buses behind, but he's at a... One more to get. Seven. Yep, so he actually had a 10 there. It was corrected. 62 through six, or 63 through six rather, and then a 70 through seven. Barber now is one of his tougher tests. I mean, honestly, Dave Barber, he went to like a string of 14 straight without a good leave one time in the Friday Night Pro League. I remember I was watching one of the Friday Night Pro Leagues where Oops. nothing would carry for him. Yeah. Nick Norcross foot fouls in the first one, so he'll have to re-rack. That tiny little light over midway through uh, indicates that. Barber on the second on shot, six pin out, and three more to get. I bet Norcross is happy that he doesn't have to deal with the eagle. Yeah, there, it is sort of an interesting incentive, and you know that's just how it works out right here. An unintentional foul, you actually get a better outcome out of that. So the only thing worse is punching a quarter worse. That's better. That's better. It's a hay bucket. Canadian bucket or hay bale, yeah. Although I still don't know if the bucket's a widespread term in Canada. We're still on the lookout. So this is the last ball for Norcross. This will be an eight box. Good out out of that. Yeah, Barber with another banana split. Oh boy. We saw Casey McCool earlier. Oh, get over Wood. Get over ten. You were hit. Curses. But he's guaranteed 120. Ooh. Well, cuts back on it. At least a five. Crossovers leave Kings. Powerful hit, though. And 10 for Bobber. For 121. That's well pinned. Only six pins left standing in the six opens. Uh, six no mark frames. There's a spare. No cross covers. All right, Norcross might be a little under his average, but. Yeah, we can see that Teal score at pro rates to a 97, but with good count here on that spare. Don't, don't. Do. <laughs> I don't like Jenga, please. <laughs> Are you nervous? Dave Barber's messing with my tripod here. That's an eight count on that. On the plus side, we do need a new camera. <laughs> Do we want to send the bill to Bob Lee so he can pay for it? <laughs> now you're thinking like a businessman. Uh, no, no, no. You buy it, you break it, you buy it. Exactly. It, it, we're, it, it, it's a business. <laughs> see Tim Susie on lane four. We'll see him in a moment. Last ball for Nick Norcross. 
and he gets his 10 to recover for a 106. Hey, Barber 121. Dejected with that outcome. Norcross had a tough go of it in Friday Night Pro League as well. I just feel like he's due to get back on track. Scally on 57 and a ball. Winchell 61 at the half. Norcross drives seven, seven in the spare for a 64 half. Yeah, Scally going well here. Hmm. Winchell, is, Winchell and Scally both are impeccable in the head pin. Oh, oh gosh. Scally chops through. Just not getting the fortune on the subsequent balls. Winchell not a bad crack at it. Every time Winchell's had a good leave, he's made the spare. Every split, he has not. Simple as that. That's about what you could expect. Scally a nine. And a ten for Winchell. Third string of five. Two more coming on up. We'll see Tim Susie and Craig Holbrook. And then Brendan O'Dowd and Bob Whitcomb. Two Hall of Famers. And a strike for Justin Scally. You keep being all over that head pin. That was bound to happen. Winchell, he's got head pin. He's got the setback. Now there's a Canadian term we can all get behind. Oh, yeah. Adam Melanson, I think, was the one who prominently posted about it one time. On a certain forum, we moderate you and I, Kevin. Yep. Four, five, and seven with that annoying piece of wood. That never does anything for anybody, anytime. That's why Norcross calls that the shot that never goes. And he is so right about that. Yeah. Some say chip the five into the four seven. You know, the old adage of play less and more, why shouldn't that apply here as well? Ten. Strike fill for Scally starts at seven. And he's eight for eight on the head pick. His shot on the three pin drives straight through. Nine down, one to get. Winchell will start his eighth box now. Got the head pin and he's caught right up with a strike. Just go when you can. You bowl well, the pacing will get itself figured out. Phil was nine on the strike and it's nine in the box. For Scally, 101 through eight. Just uh, throw more dialogue boxes in your face, Kevin. Do, do, do. Yeah, Scally with another bomb. Yeah, I could have sworn there were pins there a moment ago. Second strike for Scally to go with his three spares. Winchell, head pin, five, stands firm. I guess non-crossovers leave Kings two. Hmph. Too bad on that strike fill. Casey McCool said, banana split, I'm hungry. Yeah. Some time ago, but yeah. Yeah. There's a spare on strike. Mitchell congratulating himself on a job well done, as he should. Scally, that's uh, a different sort of four, five, seven. Well, this do we call the, Do we call that the setback, even though the wood's completely different? Actually, it's diagonal woods, I think, pretty good. This, this time it should go. Yeah. Here it comes, sweep it over. Oh, the wood foiled him. Nine, the fill is nine. By the way, Scally with a head pin, perfect string, 10 for 10. Winchell was thin. And a 10 for Justin Scally for a 130. Oh, yeah. Gotta feel good about that. Second ball, Winchell into the 4-7. Oh, he too. was disappointed with that, although I'm not sure that vertical wood would have carried through to the 10 anyway. We might find out anyway. He stares back at the 2-10. 
Oh, it did go. So that was the wood, then it was the 10, then it was the two. Thank the you very came, much. The ball came back from up in the air and took up the two pin. 127. Yeah. Yeah, and Winchell was nine for 10 on the head pin, actually, in fact. It was good shooting all around. So three strings down and two to go. I'm just pulling up something here. Looking around the field, we got two boxes to go just about everywhere else. We seem to have, usually the TV lanes have the worst pacing. Now we got the best pacing. The Hall of Famers yeah. are coming up. Oh, that's Glenn Gill out of the ACST uh, concurring. Yeah, you got to shoot the five in that situation if you're going to face the setback. Because that, whenever you buzz the head pin past the two pin or the three pin, it just tumbles in front of the four seven for the four five seven, the setback shot. It's just such a difficult situation here where the wood is just so flat that you just can't really leverage anything. Uh, we have Justin Scally signing in a chat. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, couldn't resist. I was telling him. What was that? I said I was telling him you should get get a get a sl slow mo cut of that wacky four drop I had in the first half. Yeah. The one two three six takeout. Yeah. Go figure. Weird. My thing is, I was telling I was telling Dave this when I was walking off the lane. It seems like my ball is working better on the Brooklyn side. You go it usually doesn't. Go figure, although. Uh, you, um, and how did you de develop that technique of just, like, swooping the b arm up high? I don't think I've ever asked you. Like, uh, did it just come naturally? Did anyone coach you to, like, you know, use your full arm span, so to speak? Or? What's that? Say that again? Like, how did you develop your technique simply? It's just that huge arm swing simply. Uh, it just kind of happened, I guess. Yeah. Got that Clayton Kershaw. I mean, like, I tell hitting. people, like, if I... If my arm, if if my arm was was was, was parallel to the lane, I'd be lobbing it every time. Uh, I see. So it slows the timing down, at it, perhaps. More, more or less. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and how's how's you doing, by the way? Uh, uh, I'm at 344 for three. I had a good uh, good good finish there. That one, obviously, I was only 214 for two. So. Well, 115 made the cut. That was uh, the last event on the lakeside. So we'll see. So. The goal's 580. So we shall see. Good luck. Thank you. Justin Scally, we saw him there. He's rotating out onto lane uh, seven next, and we'll have the penultimate string, second to last string, that is, in just a moment. Uh, it looks like everybody, eh, there's one box left. We'll be getting that all move signal very, very soon. We, are, we have another comment here, Greg. Another what? We have another comment. Yeah. Wish that they had candle pin bowling out in Ohio, and he said he loves the game. Yeah, Jimmy, course. if you ever come out this way, there's a bunch of houses you can try. Uh, just looking into something real quick. Though we still have the Wyoming Civic Center, I believe that's still a Candlepin Center with a lone home of Candlepins in Ohio. I'm sorry, I don't know Ohio geography, but just thought I'd point that out. There are also a number of uh, Candlepin lanes and, you know, lesser known places as well like I mean South Shore Country Club I'm not sure we would have ever found out had you know Hingham not gotten a Friday Night Pro League team to go there how about this one there's one out in Wyoming it's the Wyoming Civic Center but that's yeah. in Ohio tricky tricky yeah that's what about um, Albany New York has one as well well they they only have like a handful Right, like the Apex in Marlboro also is lopsidedly 10-pin, but there are candles still there, you know? Oh, yeah. All right, we have Nick Norcross and Ken Susi up. You probably recognize him from the uh, old Mason's now Putts King of the Hill. He starts off straight down the middle. Leads a 7, 9, 10. Tim's I don't even know what to call this shot that um, Tim has. A confusing mess for certain. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I, I can't. Yeah, I've been going outside all day. Yeah. He actually just commented saying that they're running out of bowling alleys out, out in Columbus, Ohio. Which is a shame. I mean, there's. Yeah, it's, nationwide problem for certain. Oh, nice boot. And Orcus with a nice 10. Yeah, pin that out well using the wood out in front. 
Tim Susi, the absolute best qualifier in the Sanford singles elimination. That was the event that Tim, uh, Tim Douglas, excuse me, uh, won the playoff round of. He went against uh, Chris Merrill and Sean Baker in the final of that. That was a scary thing. There were a couple of, there was a time where uh, Tim Douglas could have knocked out Sean Baker outright, but he couldn't do it in the semifinal round. So he actually dragged Sean Baker alongside in that eliminator phase. If you don't get four down to two cleanly, if there's a tie, then everyone involved in the tie advances in an elimination phase. In a knockout phase, I believe it's a one string roll off. I will confirm the format here. Not a lot of stuff is posted online about the format. You just have to learn through experience, pretty much. As we, which is why we have Candlepin Bowling Network as well, so that we can archive this for the future. Nine box and ten for Norcross and Susie, 19 each. Well, earlier I was. Go on. Okay. Norcross with a seven drop. Is the one. The four seven. It hasn't changed. Tim Susie carries the pocket. Oh, what a spare by Nick Northcross. Fetching results for our folks out there. I realized I hadn't picked up the women's results at any point. Well, Come on, Wood, roll, roll. It's a nine. Or no, this will be the third ball coming up. That was on a spare try. Uh, lift the mic up, please. And that'll be 10 for Tim Susi. Or. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Okay. Looking to get in like the yellow zone, kind of, sort of. Just like. Just a little bit of the yellow. Eight fill for Norcross, as you mentioned, Kevin. And then, uh, ooh, okay. Just the three pin. Susie, the four horsemen. And a nine box for Norcross. Good to see you, Karen, in Florida. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't look at that image, look at this one. It's a uh, nine down and one to get. Susie just missed the horseman. Norcross, a uh, skinny slice of that one. Now it's a Seven. whole different bowling other than from when I was bowling. Now the pins are flying. <laughs> you really did warm it up for one another. Yeah, bro. Your dearest Terry Ann was telling you that and you didn't believe her. <laughs> yeah, <she did. laughs> That's a spare for Norcross. The 457 goes because the wood was properly positioned this time as it always should be on that shot. And it's 56 and a ball at the half. Tim Susi is currently 14th in the Pro Series standings. Uh, in good shape to possibly make the uh, playoffs. Top 24 in that, and Pro Series points overall will make the playoffs on April 6th, which we will have on Candlepin Bowling Network live from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Again, seven days after the Easter Classic. Yeah. Although I guess Whoa, with a high-low jack. Ooh, always fun. With Dude. Wood, say what you will, it's a pretty storied shot. John Winchell, Hall of Famer. Ray Colbert. Sorry, I had the wrong name. What possessed me, I wonder? Winchell in the pocket leaves a 5 7 pen. Jeez, that seemed like a good ball, too. That's usually the sort of ball with a weak head pin hit, but it didn't look like that at all. Holmberg's got a three and two split. With a piece of wood. Both these two 
both these two won't mind our camera here. They've been in front of many a TV camera in their careers. Where's Craig Holbrook in the standings for the uh, playoffs? I'm glad you asked. Craig Holbrook is in ninth Nine. place, almost in the first round by. So with a good finish here, he might pass. Well, he's close. Well, right today he's playing for the bye. Right. All but certainly. I still need to figure out that spreadsheet math uh, at one point. I haven't had a chance to sit down with Dave amid all his uh, busy schedule and figured that out with him. Just it's a it's a complicated integer calculation. It's something it's something resembling to NASCAR uh, playoffs uh, calculation. Oh, what a strike by Winchell! That's what he told me. Big hammer by Winchell. Holbrook trying to answer. Just Ooh, no, you don't want that six to go on that one. Uh, he has a good piece of wood. He's trying to get the wood to move closer. Oh, he's going to have to go high on that. Another devious split for him. Oh, he's going to have to go high on it. There's no, there's no way around it. Oh, oh it's a win. Carry through. What a shot. I think my only, favorite, I only think in this game because the nine ten seemed like oh, it seems kind of routine. I could do that. It's so much easier watching even back here. Like, it is, but try uh, try doing it when it's in front of you. Yeah, especially when you've got the wind from their uh, speedy approaches. And Craig Holbrook in his sixties, and drives. not at all far from his peak. Oh boy. Kevin Phil, Winchell has an important second ball coming up, trying to fill this strike. Good sticks. Oh, that's ten pin didn't go, but it is nine. Oh, book. Right idea. Just a little full. Winchell with a ten. Holbrook with an eight. So one mark a piece, a piece in the early going, not a head-to-head -head comparison, but all five-string qualifier. This is the fourth of five strings. Oh, sorry. And then the knockout round to come. Winchell drops nine with a wobbling five. Holbrook a little off the head pin. Draws five. These scorers are a little mean. They have a bar graph of like how close you are to 300, as if. Not in this game, you ain't. It will never be done. Never, ever. It took seven strikes nice. in a row for each of those bowlers to get their 245. Ralph Seven, Chris Sargent. And of course, Mike Nordone Jr. chimes in. He says hello from Massachusetts. Huh. Of course, Nardone's late. Good, Better late than good never. to see you, my friend. Better late than never. That was his uh, team name in the summer league once. What, better late than never? Uh, Nardone's late. <laughs> <laughs> they did pretty well. Yeah, I bet me and you, how did you do in your summer league last year? You see him on the Atlantic Candlepin single store as well. Is that a two, Phil? Yikes. Tim Matero talking on his Ripping the Rack podcast, which you can find on YouTube and other podcasts, usual suspects, uh, mentioned they had a prize pool at one point in his league. I can't believe that five pin didn't take it, uh, where it would, um, if you hit the one five, you would get a progressive jackpot that the team was chipping into, or maybe it was a league-wide jackpot, actually. Tim Matero, a great bowler, Hall of Fame bowler out of Maine. As you may know, Craig, you know how Easter is full this year? Yes. And we never thought we would get to that. They never thought they would get to that point, but about the same time we started streaming, they started filling up, and it's just wonderful to see. Ray Simino would be so happy to see. Oh, I know he's happy. But 
Pivot here will let the comment on Facebook on. <laughs> We're going to drop him in it. <laughs> he was like, oh, it's already full. I was going to bolt this year. And I was like, we were trying to get you a bolt last year and you didn't come down. Oh, shame. No, because Chris Bolvey was doing the uh, ripping the rack with uh, Matero. And everybody was like, you got to come down and do this. Yeah. No, no, listen, people, you know. Tim's got his opinions. They're probably principled. They're probably rational, but the heck with you anyways. <laughs> I'm offended, and no, I never stay on for the disclaimer at the end. <laughs> so it doesn't apply to me. Eight box. Uh, ten box, 58 through six. Again, ripping the rat podcast on YouTube and podcast platforms. <laughs> Candlepin Corner also has their own podcast going on opposite days as well. That will be on YouTube, Candlepin Corner. Uh, they simply just do it on alternate weekends. It's ripping the racks oh, alternate weekends. Oh, but it's Four into two. Interesting. Almost a bad door. But yeah. Diamond for Temi. If you're like a couple guys looking at a camera and talking about bowling, that's your that's your fix. There you go. That's your fix. Jordan Britton and Corey Alisi on that one. Candlepin Corner. Oh, the diamond doesn't carry. Yeah, the three pin just fluttered away. Ain't that the way? Norcross wants this double bad. You know it. Biggers can't be juices and candle pin. Guess not. Nine's pretty fine for Seuss out of that. 67 through 7. Well, we call Matt Seussy Seuss. I'm not sure if Tim goes by the same pet names. I don't think so. I, I'm not actually, actually, I think Matt Susie goes by Doc. Dr. Seuss, that's right. Yeah, time for Norcross. Yeah, yeah. Having a, yeah, having a good continuation here. Two spares and a strike. He wants to be even higher. He's got such high standards for himself, but well, ever since he's he got time. Threw, ever since he threw that 201 up in Augusta, he's been setting that standard. But trying to meet that standard is a different story. All right, he punched. He punched. Yeah. A little it's, too full, but. It's good head pin accuracy, though. Susie spares his first mark. Norcross, I'm trying to remember. I think Norcross. Uh, 13th in the standings. We went over that. That's right. Yeah. So he's, he too is trying to play for a bye as well. Not a bad crack at those pins. Still two to get. Excuse me. Susie washes out six. Tim's got 83 through eight. Norcross at eight box, 105 through nine. One, two, eight, and 10. Just missed the head pin. Got everything else though. Sticks might matter. Oh! How does that happen? Third straight split for Norcross. Susie collects 10. 93 through 9. Norcross is trying to make it. Trying to get something to give here. Triangle, good out, nine. Norcross, 114. There you see that gold on red Candlepin bowling shirt like you were saying earlier, Kevin. Yep. What a show. That, that's one of the best ones. And a nine for Tim Susie. For 102. Actually, no, he has one more ball. One more ball. Give it to me at a 103. You got it. On the board. 103 to 114. I do regret how the times where I've just not been on the ball with the pin action. Just there's so much going on trying to look at all the scores as well. You know, there's only so much we can do here. I regret. Even though I wish. It would be I, nice. I wish it were a perfect broadcast. That's what it is. I just wish it were perfect. 
Chris Winningars is doing pretty well. He's on uh, 119 and two over there. 109 and two balls out through nine. He's at 129 and a ball, Winniars. Nice going. John Winchell, Greg Holbrook. Spare, oh uh, boy. Denpin doesn't go. Holbrook, for the first time, misses a head pin and uh, has just the six pins on the left side. Winchell sliced it. You saw that. He saw it too. He can't believe that didn't go. On two and five, I think you'll find that is for Holbrook. It is. That's nine. Hey, Greg, I'll be right back. I got to go over, up to my yep. car. Right we'll take it from here. Holbrook has a nine box, or an eight box, excuse me. Taking a look here, hey, if you haven't had a chance yet, would you please hit that like button, that thumbs up button on the video, wherever you may be watching, uh, on whatever platform you may be watching, on Facebook or YouTube. Either way, we greatly appreciate your support just by watching. Thank you. Terry Ann's keeping the seat warm for us here. <laughs> John Winchell's got nine drop here. And Holbrook a two, four, and 10. One of his tougher tests. Again, Holbrook has only missed one head pin. Winchell has only missed one head pin this entire string. You can peek at a few score sheets. Currently, Holbrook is at a 328 through three. And Tim Susi was at a 424 through three and a 527. I think Tim Susi's doing pretty well. <laughs> he caught me taking a peek at that, but I don't think he'll mind me looking. 527 through four. 131 plus average. So, Tim Susi, who led Sanford, Maine, Bolarama in the singles elimination, might he again go high up on a singles leaderboard here? Winchell 10, Holbrook 10. There you see the scores. Two marks apiece for the bottom two in the order. North Cross with his three marks, 114, not a head to head matchup here but they very much will be in a few minutes' time. Fourth of five strings, then what will likely happen is a warm-up while, warm while everyone draws their lanes, and then the competition proper will begin. We'll have Kevin Burns again and Paul Grant just making his way up from his Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour uh, matchup he's broadcasting, or had been broadcasting. Okay, he might be here in a matter of moments. We'll see. Eighth box for each of these two. John Winchell first. Bob Whitcomb's doing well to our left. He's on 109 and a ball through 829 plus over, so we'll see him soon. I can't wait for that. John Winchell, six, nine, ten, and a four pin as well. Holbrook. Curls into the 1-3. That wood's rolling in front of the 4-pin. But at least Holbrook's got a good leaf to look at. He spared his last good one. He's had to wait a while for his next one. Winchell can't spray wood back into the 4-pin. Holbrook just dropped it to the left, unfortunately. Maybe didn't turn it over as much as he would have wanted. Too bad. There's 10, and there's a 9. Winchell, although not head-to-head, -head, picks up an extra pin. There's your levels up, my friend. All right, thank you very much. Kevin Burns back checking in. Getting some grub from the Alley Cat uh, restaurant back there? Yeah. Well, she said Oof. she was one thing in the I'm hungry, and I. That's a 1 8 punch out, folks. Yikes. The scoreboard's not even going to give him credit for a split. They turn the numbers beige when it thinks it's a split, but that technically isn't one, apparently. It's really not. 
Yeah. I, yeah, they're all connected, I guess. It's actually going to take a moment and pause on this one. Holbrook's second try. 139, 1378, rather. Oh, seven pin. It was partway over. And, he, and he's muttering wow to himself. That's a bad wow. <laughs> Winchell's thinking. Oh, of course, Barber's uh, retrieving wood in the lane adjoining, so Winchell will not shoot until he's out of the way. He's got 10. Holbrook's trying to get in for a first round bye. I think he's going to need higher scores than this to find his way into the top eight, though. Winchell completes his spread eagle, unfortunately, and now he's got one ball left to sort it all out. Two pin. He's got the wood action going. That's a very good out of that. Forward becomes eight, 102. That might matter. Never know that extra stick. Good crowd here. Got a hundred plus or so in this, all told. Always love to have triple digit crowds. Great to see you all here. Thank you very much for watching on Candle Pin Bowling Network. Penultimate string in progress here. Winchell takes out four. Well, just as soon as I gloat about how fast the TV lanes are going, I think we are the last ones left to go. Greg Holbrook, one, three, six, seven, eight. Again, Holbrook's been on the headpin more than not. A lot of splits have been tripping him up, including getting a two-fill when he punched straight through on the 1-5. So there are those mitigating factors. Wow, Ooh, and again, the eight pin was hit and partway down. He's just smiling. He's like, what do I yeah. have to do to get this get this yeah. place to go? They glued it down. I'm just kidding. They do great work here in Kingston. Of what little I've met of them, but it's a very beautiful house. Love the wood finishing they've got here on the walls and everything. The approaches are, those, those are wood approaches entirely as well. You love to see that because those are tougher to maintain. And you know, I, I love anybody who's putting candle pin and keeping candle pin going, but you love the people who are doing it with the old wooden lanes, you know, just extra bonus points. Love to see it. All righty, last string coming on up. Hall of Famer versus Hall of Famer. Here we go. Even though it's singles, I still call it. Well, we'll see them possibly next to each other. I'm not sure what the order is. Nope, it will be O'Dowd and Susie first. Brendan O'Dowd, we saw him a few weeks ago on the Friday Night Pro League with Team Millis out of Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. Paul Grant is alongside here. He'll be uh, joining us in just a moment. Tim Susie begins with uh, Six down, two, four, seven, ten. Brendan O'Dowd, four out. Oh, pretty good wall shot there. You got to get Tim Susie Browning points for dri driving all the way from Vermont just to be here. Yeah. Still got Candlepin in Vermont, North Star Bowling Center, for example. I think that's his home house. I could be wrong. I believe so. Last I checked. Brendan pins out seven. Last string here. Top 24 out of both shifts combined in this five-string qualifier will advance. And top eight will get a first round bye in this singles elimination knockout round. One string matches once we get to that bracket. Tim Susi, north of a 130 average, is a heavy favorite to possibly win it all, maybe, in the qualifiers. Remember, that's a good chunk of your pro series points as well, or rather I should explain now. That's a good chunk of your pro series points. He picks up the 3-6, and he's right back where he left off. 
incredible consistency. Just wish we could see him more consistently, as it were. O'Dowd wasn't far off there. If that wood had rolled a little more, it would have gotten into the 10 pit. The masked bandit got robbed. Susie, six, eight pin. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's worth sharing necessarily. No, it's not. It's, uh, it is a 10 box for Brendan O'Dowd. No, it's not because. Um, because it isn't. <laughs> That's fair. Susie, no. ooh, boy, no, no, because, left uh, behind. No, because Terry Ann looked down to see whose stuff was right by your feet. And then I pointed to Paul, and she just put her head on her shoulder and started shaking. No. <laughs> you know, it's a candle fence for cancer jar. Of course it is. Yeah. I recognize that hot and cold tote from Market Basket anywhere. Ten box for Tim Susie. Pinned that out very well. Well, of course, you had it in your hotel room for how many yeah. days up in uh, Canada? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm used to it. Three, six, seven for O'Dowd. Speaking of speaking of worlds, he's wearing the Hatchetman shirt. That's Rich Lamoni's squad. And look at this valley eye camera. A <laughs> lot of crossover between that and Central too. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey Paul, say hi to the camera. <laughs> 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 It's a hay bale for Tim Susie. I used to being on that side. <laughs> I'm just making the rounds saying hi to everybody. I'm a <laughs> social usually. person. There you go. It's like all church. Right, back in a minute. It's like church coffee hour all over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that ten pin just foiled Susie again. He was aiming at that hay bale and it didn't work out for him. Got the diamond in itself, which was pretty good. He okay. said. He said, I don't drink coffee. Look how high. He's always hyper. Yeah, he doesn't eat it. No. Oh, my God. Imagine if he did have coffee. Can you picture how hyper he would yeah. be? <laughs> I mean, we we need that energy in the game, whether you want to admit it or not. Yeah, we do. We really do. Not you, the royal you. No. Oh, Dad's got the one, two, four, nine. Yeah, two, four, six, and seven for Tim Susie. O'Dowd is on his fourth box. Good sticks. One more to get the head stick. I'm a little too high, sorry. Third ball, nine. Brendan O'Dowd, 34 through four, and Tim Susie a 10 box for a 55 half. Last string until we figure out who's made the cut here and which woman will become bowler of the year. Blanca Gacharna was just north of 500, but with the difficult pins and how it's been stymieing all the ladies today, I think she's got a decent chance, honestly, of at the very least holding on. But the other key factor, did Sonia Johnson show? I didn't see her. No, she didn't. And I don't even think she was on the list to even be here today. Well. There's yeah. a lot of guys. I was at Lita the other night, and I asked Chris Bolvier if he was going to be here. He said no. I asked um, Jay Seminole. He said he wasn't coming either, so. There's a few guys that are normally yeah. at the events that are not here. I have not seen just the right yeah. at the last two tournaments. But it is understandable, you know. Well, I It does tend to be an expense more often than not. Now, that's true of 10-pin bowling as well, you know, for many of them trying to, you know, succeed on the circuit where the travel is even more exorbitant. But still, you know, relative to everything, uh, you know, it, it's tough. It's a tough time investment to keep attending these events as well, and you know. And despite that, a great turnout here in Kingston, Massachusetts. I think I was over here in the Pro Series organizers, the Barbara Lees and Zuffalato, and significant others, and they all agree. I think they're pretty happy. I think just they want to. Brian Fuller just commented saying two of my favorite bulls. What, these two? Yeah. Why? Who are they? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Kevin. You know I know. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> is Danny Harris here? Uh, you saw him, didn't you? Yes, 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 yes he he's, yes, he's on he the is. wrong, he's too far away from the cameras, but he's here. He is here. We might, might see him later if he's bowling anything like he usually does. Actually, he told me he's under average. Mm. Although that's pretty high for him, so we'll see. That could, that could still mean anything. That's uh, uh, it comes third ball. He gets an eight to begin. He's you know. down one pin to Craig Cobra. Yeah, not head to head, but <laughs> when you know these two and you know they have been competitive on TV before. I think my favorite match with. Um, Craig Colebrook is when he had to face Tom Osa, and Osa beat him by five yeah. with that triple strike. I will, I will say one thing. Holbrook had a much better second in the string than Olsta. The pinfall just didn't go for him. That is a match we have all watched multiple times before. That's a spare for Holbrook. One of the most iconic Channel 5 matches of all time. And the funny thing oh, is, yeah. at, the, oh. at the next Worlds, when... Tom was up here, I believe it was two years ago. It was, yep, we got me last April. I covered that match with Anthony Karen. Yes. That's when I made my announcing debut. And that was on Candlepin Bowling Network, that's right. Yep. You got that camera. Yeah, we had to like plunk an iPad down. It was a bit ad hoc, but I mean, when you got those two, you have to. Ben Colbrook buries the pockets, drops nine. How about a strike, back door? That's pretty good. He got the head pin, to be fair, but that's a strike on spare. A big 20. And Bobby Wick drops six. The one, four, seven, ten. Hmm. Play the head pin with the, uh, on the left-hand side. Hopefully you can snap yeah. that wood. Could possibly get tripped. That is, oh, he went full. He went too full. Didn't and he knew it too. He did shade right. Now it's all gone. That was gone. That would have gone. Oh, JJ is here. Ten box. JJ is here. Where is he in the uh, standings? Uh, well, after that... After that runner-up finish at the three-man random draw teams, a tremendous performance there. He's on the right side of the playoff bubble, so um, I think he's, let's see. Trickney, he's 19th from top 24 make it. Class B, folks, Class B. Well, Brooke with another mark. 20 again. 49 at the three. 59 plus. Five, Tyler nine and ten. Tyler Wyman from Nova Scotia is on. Good to see you, Tyler. He Wickham too, got it. He too is an avid, a, is an avid candle pin bowler up in that area. Holbrook, spare fill. Got the head pin. It is a 2 5, and that is an 8 draw for 67 through 4. Wickham split on the last one. He got oh, it to go. It. Yes, there it oh, 9 drop, excuse me. Sorry, the 7 pin <laughs> whopper of a call, but that's a good count. You and a chance for another. A, you want to say, say a, uh, another mark for Holbrook? 77 and a ball. Brian Fuller just posted a uh, go. Hmm. I wonder why. And yes, Wickham gets it to carry through a spare, hits the left hip of the wood, and he's at 57 and a ball. Not too shabby in its own right. 19 and another, and good pinning as well. Only left two pins standing. Holbrook only left one pin standing. Susie only left one pin standing. And now Brendan O'Dowd, the 42 half looking to build. Brendan is also one of our announcers, I believe. Am I right? Uh, uh, no, he'll be with. He would be with Ali Chat right now. Uh, Ali Chat's sort of in a state of dormancy right now. Uh, just it's uh, Frank doesn't have a lot of bowling projects on his plate at the current moment right now. His involvement's limited to just the Friday Night Pro League at the moment. But signs could be there in the future. You know, I mean, there is the space for them at, to cover these events and that. So 
perhaps one day in the future. You know, it was great to ha cover Worlds with them as well, the final of that competition. So we might see them yet. And Rick Sanucci from Worcester, Mass, also a professional candle pinball, says hi. Hello. Uh, he's been battling injuries after injuries. Hopefully we'll see him back on the Pro Tour soon. Got an eight box. No doubt someone with one of those, some 10 pin tendencies in his delivery there. Really has a lot of poise at the line. In Candlepin, you sort of kind of have to more slide up and really charge the line a little bit. I mean, you still have to keep control of your body, of course, and balance is still everything. Or you really have to drive through. No doubt a good hit, but a split, two, four, six. Susie gets the side saddle to go for his second spare. Susie's not having a 130 average, but when you get bolstered th by that through four strings, this should be pretty fine. I mean, he will be over 600, basically building on it from here. Box eight. Tim Susie. Head pin, five, eight, nine, ten. Six fill. Hey. Now it's seven box. Lucy picking pins here. Five, nine, and ten. He's been pinning very well. He only left one pin standing, and he's still pinning well. He only leaves one more in this case, despite the dastardly split. 90 through 8. Almost perfect. I mean, there is a question of the pinning does tell you a lot about the bowler. Now, whether it gains a lot in the score, not as much as the spares do. But whoever can, whoever's pinning better is probably more accurate in general. It gets a pretty good barometer of how they're doing. And that's probably why 10s leave the spares, just because it gives it an indicator of how on a bowler really is, whether the pins feel like cooperating or not. But when they don't want to cooperate, you can tell. Let's see if this wood works for Brendan. He's going to go to the right side wood. Left side was available as well, but it was quite flat, so he chose not to go there. Susie off target on the diamond. Third ball coming up for O'Dowd. Hits shot. On the wood, helicopter's over and bounces off the sidewall wildly. He'll stick with nine. Susie completes his 10, runs down the remaining two of the diamond. 100 through 9. Uh, 75. Apologies. I seem to have marked a spare that wasn't there. Let's uh, break and unbreak the scoreboard. It's 94. Sorry, I had a spare marked down wrongly for Susie earlier. We'll get it right for the head to head matches for sure. Oh, down on the board, nine drop and a spare. Susie's still, of course, in the triple digits right here, so he'll be doing pretty fine. He's still going to get 600 for this series, even though that's a seven, and he will end up with 101. Yeah, Brendan O'Dowd was on 446 through four. He had a 131 to start off as well, so he'll be disappointed for sure to end it this way, but had a good showing here today. And he He's also someone who could easily, with a little more refinement, go even higher up in the standings. He spares again here. He's back on the range. He's really not that far off at all. Thanks to everyone watching here on Candlepin Bowling Network. Five more boxes and then the playoff round to begin. The finals will be here on five and six, so we're stationed perfectly for it. We'll follow the semifinal action wherever it may be. We'll slot it in. Also eager to see how the women are doing. We believe 
I mean, with Blanca Gatrana finishing second in the standings, Lori Lewis was first. Lori Lewis was 525, Blanca Gatrana 511. Allie Barber with 500 as well takes third. I believe it's highly likely that we will uh, see Blanca Gatrana become Bowler of the Year. A men's and women's title winner this year in the Pro Series. Great to have everyone taking part in the Pro Series. And I do mean everyone. Greg Holbrook, 77 and a ball at the half. Carves through for a half juice. Worcester. Puts a half Worcester in that. Now Bob Woodcomb, three, six, and seven. He gets a seven count, 64 at the half. Holbrook, ooh, 10 pin was all that stood. Would have made a nice strike fill. Whitcomb was very close on that. And he a board to the left, and he slices that three pin over, I bet. Holbrook 10, 89 through 6, 29 over. Assuming a rate of 10 a box. And Whitcomb, that's how you do it. 310 goes. It is a 10 box, but a pretty one. Greg Holbrook, a nine drop. Oh, uh, Bob Whitcomb with a four, eight, and ten. Went off to the side. Huh. Here's an interesting one. There's a diagonal piece and a horizontal piece. Holbrook first, he spares. Fifth mark in six boxes. What else is new for Holbrook? Five and seven. This try could go. Yeah, let's see where he plays it. He's going to go high on the wood. He rolls across. If that eight falls forward, he gets a chance. It will not. Whitcomb denied four stands. Whitcomb is dialed in. He's had head pin four straight after missing the first three. Now he's got a nine box and an 83 through seven. Greg Holbrook, close. Holbrook has a nine drop on this one. Greg is at 108 through seven. Bob now, he smacks the head pin full, but the four drops just from the sheer power of the delivery. Holbrook, he's got wood on the left side, plays it well. Avoids getting tripped up on the cap. Plays it smartly on the left side. Whitcomb, got it. Straight on it, direct hit. 93 and a ball through eight. Greg Holbrook has 118 and a ball. Yep. As you see it on screen, folks. You've tuned in at a good time if you're just tuning in, I'll tell you what. Holbrook set now, he delivers. And the fill is high again. It's 10. Strike on spare. 128. So 138 good. plus two. Wickham again impeccable on the head pin, but a split this time. Four of those head pin hits have been splits, unfortunately. He showed us how to make a huge slice earlier. Can he do it with the spare on the line? He's full on it. It would have. Going off the sidewall. A little too full. Interestingly, the 6 7 becomes simpler because he sprayed the wood all the way across. Last string. Until the playoffs. Tripped off the cap, as it were, but happy to have that pin. Nine box. 108 through nine. Sorry? No, you said what, what I was going to say. Let's see what Craig Holbrook says here. Last box. Strikefield just missed the head pin. Still Hello. filling. Hello, Kaleri. In reference to Bob Kaleri of Lexington, Massachusetts. Had a quirky bowling website, Bob Kaleri. Uh, oh, what a hammer by Wickham. All those head pins, it was a matter of time. How's this for Holbrook? 
Oh, just the front three. That's a shot that a lot of people have been running into where the pin action just dies by the time it gets to the back row. Central three was struggling with that during the Friday night match, and that's why the result went the way it did. Watch that on Candlepin Bowling Network. The nine box is 155 for Craig Holbrook. Now there's a Hall of Fame school. That's for sure. I've seen a couple of other 140s and uh, 130 as well. Wickham's on his last ball, one to go here. Filling the strike. His shot. Got the two in the back for the fill is eight. 126. Hey, that's pro grade as well. And completely on brand for Bob Whitcomb, who's at a long range of years with a high average. Even considering he had an injury earlier in this bowling season, he did quite well for himself. So there we go. What year is it? Craig Holbrook has a 155 and Bob Whitcomb with a 126. And uh, we're going to sign off right now. Stand by, Paul. We'll need you in just a moment. But first, we're going to sign off now, folks, to be in the know when the knockout round starts. We're going to click on as soon as it does. Candlepin Bowling Network. Like and follow on Facebook and subscribe on you or subscribe on YouTube so that you're in the know when this begins. Uh, the last string will get included. They will warm up, draw lanes and warm up briefly, and then we will be right back with that knockout round. Until then, so long.